What's up, everybody? Um, this is Carl Lavonzo with The Corporate Mouth. Um, as y'all know, G-Status ATO Hustle has released their season two. We had some technical difficulties during the premiere, but they finally decided to put it on YouTube. They got all that taken care of. It's all straight now. And it was released actually earlier today. So you guys should go check that out. But today I'm gonna give you a brief little, you know, I guess thoughts of what I had to say once I watched it. So um, let's get into it. Y'all, welcome to the corporate mouth. Just don't kill the vibe. All right, now watching um, G Status, I will have to say first. I have to want to talk a little bit about production. See, production um, as opposed to. Um, season one has changed dramatically like um, the production quality is a lot better um, just the overall setup is is nicer than first season I, I like to see when people have these shows and they progress you can see the progression you grow with them like you see how they did it the first season the second season things are look a lot better so I did enjoy that um, what I wasn't here for um, which was also something that I wasn't here for on the first season are these long winded scenes. These scenes are so freaking long. Like literally, I love Charlie, Charlie down. But Char out of a two hour episode, Charlie had to have about an hour and a half of it. Like basically the, everything that Charlie had to say or everything that he had to get across in his, I guess in his scene, it was, it was across, it came across the first five minutes. Like we did not need 20 or 30 additional minutes of him and our guy uh, doing whatever or just it was an extra it was long drawn out walk-ins which were cute but they were just too long and I noticed and the confessionals can be a little bit shorter too like y'all are given like these long speeches in these like in these confessionals and it, we're not here for all of that like I don't want to watch a whole two-hour episode of people just sitting in a confessional just talking in a, a long-winded scene where you're just talking so that was the about when it comes to production. That's the one thing I did not care for. But overall, like I said, the quality of the show was nice. Um, like this is a very good looking cast. Everybody looks amazing. Um, so let's get into this first scene that um, we have. Let's get it. All record, off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote. All record, off record eyes. Still want to act, not the ghost. Running through it with the young and blue and sad. Listen, presence also coming to it. I've been giving yeses when I shouldn't do it. I complete ejected, but the moves are loose. I've been a barely moving, but I'm still going to boost them. I can't work on winners when I know you're losing. So I work the winners and they throw the deuces. Kiss, I have to pick and shoot and never zoom. Cause for the facts, I need racks, right, paper, right, cash, right. fuck a tax. That's a joke. Tell them laugh. Uncle Sam, fuck out the back. Brody Platt, but get a whack. Contract, give me the max. I got lab on my back. You ain't that. Then it's whoa, 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 whoa. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to make no time to waste. For the record, for the record, for the record. Yeah. For the, for the record. See, that is an example. Like, first of all, the scene was nice. I love the walk-in. I like um, everything. Like I said, the quality has gotten a lot better. And like I said, it was pretty lengthy, but it got what it needs to get across. I like that Charlie looks nice. He looks amazing. But I also feel, do anybody else feel like they're really trying to push a Charlie narrative? Like, I don't know if Char Charlie is the main cast member or is he like the face of G-Status? I'm not sure, but if you watch the season, you will see it's a lot of Charlie in there and it's a lot of his music being played throughout everything. And it's like, I don't know, like this is, y'all took what y'all think, but I feel to me like G-Status tried to push a Charlie narrative. Cause I felt like he was kind of like more shoved down our throats more than any cast members. Like literally you have a cast of about 80 people on here and we watched two hours of literally one person. And that's, what I'm, I was, that's basically what I'm saying. Get this party started. And thanks for coming. I love you all. Amy and Gay. It's time to fuck it up.
What's up guys? It's your boy Tramiel. I'm back again. I'm so excited to be here. So Charlie invited me out. He invited me through DMs though. But it's kind of funny because he hadn't talked to me in a very long time, but he invited me to his party. And I'm kind of feeling like neglected. You know, I thought we were good. I thought we were on good terms, you know, because he was actually one of my favorite people from the last experience, you know, that we had. So watching this thing with Charlie and Tramiel, it seems to me that they're using Charlie as like the connection to, I guess, to like connect everybody together. That's basically what I'm getting out of it. As I'm saying, these are the scenes that I wanted to talk about. So I just picked out little ones that I wanted to see, but this is one of the ones I saw. This introduced Tramiel into it. Um, Sherrod, delicious. So kind of like a way of connecting everybody. Our guy is Charlie's best friend. So in a way I can get why he would be kind of like the center, I guess. Just, I wouldn't focus so much on him, but it makes sense to me. So if that makes any sense, <laughs> it makes sense to me. So yeah, let's watch another clip. Y'all, it's delicious. Yo, bitch, I moved up. Guess what? I'm a main cast member. The queen of G status is here, baby. And that's just period royalty. So, you guys are gonna see a lot this season some good, some bad, some ups, maybe some downs. Baby, you may even see me throw a motherfucking red bottom. Cause guess what? I'm that bitch. I'll throw it. Woo! -hoo. So, y'all, it's delicious. So I'm a rapper. Now, I don't like to categorize myself to one specific thing, but I rap. I also act, I model, I do hair, and um, <laughs> I'm just a bad bitch. This be delicious. Now, those of y'all don't know Delicious, Delicious is exactly like that in person. She cool, she funny, she's like a, such a sweetheart, and that is literally her personality. Drinking the bottle in a confessional, just I'm a bad bitch. That's gonna always be her. She's always been that way. Um, I like to see her and get more of her story because she's talking about her journey as being a trans. She talks a little bit about what's going on with you know her father passing and how it helped her come into herself and things of that nature. You know, she's brilliant. You see her music. Um, I love that song actually. Talk to me. You know, that's you know, she got that song out. Um, Sherrod, of course, and I love what I love about Sherrod is that the issue that I had with Sherrod first season is that. He was letting people, allow people to use his porn as a weapon against him. This season, he's actually owning it. That's all everybody ever wanted to do. Just own it, sir. Just own it. You've owned it, and hey, can't nobody throw that against you no more. So, hey, next. That's all I'm saying. You doing it, go ahead and do it. Do your thing, sir. Skills in a race, I'm a mill, not a snack, stand in line and get a taste, you know I spit. I'm the Mr. in the mist, killing shit. When I look in the mirror, I say, you the baddest bitch. I want to meet the girls, the girls. The girls, the girls. Welcome to the collective. Oh my gosh, you're welcome. I'm so happy to see you, honey. I didn't know you were coming to see me. Oh, yeah. Who is this? This is Charlie. You are nice fabulous. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're on the with the baddest. The baddest. The baddest. My besties did such an amazing job, I had to take them out for a little treat. And I love to shop, baby. I had to come see my good Judy, Miss Cece. Cece Rocker, that is. She's the owner of the shop, and I've been shopping here for a while. She's also a new member on Fashionaires of Atlanta. 
season two. Make sure you check that out when it come through. I love the fact that CC is young, black, and fabulous, honey. Out here getting her money all day, er day, baby. Everywhere I go, people are like, are you a stylist? Are you a model? No, I'm not, but I have a passion for that fashion, baby. Yeah. Oh my God, well check this out. I got a whole lot of new inventory, but I do gotta go finish up some paperwork. Look around, but you know I got you if you need me. Okay, girl, we will definitely do that because I saw some stuff in the window I need. Yes, honey. Let's go. People. Child, it's only to make sure that I give back to the community. <laughs> <laughs> The shade. Ooh, so oh, but guess what? We don't shop without sipping. Ooh, Ooh, you already know. Thank I love it. Let's get a coffee, baby. Yeah. This is how we do. Let like, me know if y'all need me, okay? Okay, CC. Mm. Okay. This scene to me, this just could be me. Look, stage as fuck to me. <laughs> Like, I think a lot of people watch these love and hip hop shows and these housewives and all these other popular reality shows. And it feels to me like in this particular scene, shopping scene, they try to emulate what they saw on TV. And it just didn't come off natural. And the girl, I think that from the fashionista girl that owns boutique, she was like a whole mood to me. Like, when she talked about what's shopping without sipping, <laughs> that shit was so funny to me. But the, even the whole thing was just so staged. Sipping in the store. Like, nobody does that. And it's like, to go on this show, and that's what I like about reality TV for the LGBT community should, so, to me, showcase reality. Not y'all making up scenes like y'all just the fab girls of the community. And like I said, I love them and this is no shame, but we know that's not the case. And it's just like, y'all don't have to do that. Like, just be y'all. Whatever y'all do on y'all regular day basis is what we want to see. I do not care about y'all you know, with bags on your arms and you're toasting cups at a mall. Like, bitch, what? <laughs> Who does that? But, I mean, hey. And once again, the scene was too damn long. Way too long. It was too long. So this is one of the scenes that I did. Excuse me, one of the scenes I just skipped right through. So, let's get this Also, I'm inviting child Miss Charles Lee Ray, a.k.a. Chucky, a.k.a. Charlie oh, Exile. Oh, girl, that's the one that was talking about your eyebrows. The I don't understand. How can she talk about another bitch's eyebrows when my motherfucking beard is drawn on and she got fake tattoos? And this girl know. look like somebody's uncovered girl. Girl, they say mama puts a stain. They, that's what that's I heard. That's what I heard. That shit stank in the street. I I'm heard it from film, one of the film girls told me girl, that. Girl, puts the cum cum, puts the stain, skunk. That's what I hear. But, I mean, mama's a police, so that is Miss Helen. That sure. is Miss Helen. She calls the police. That's white girl. Oh, she calls the police. Yes, she ain't girl. the police. Oh, she's a police hoe. Right, she's a police hoe. Okay. Hopefully she's not on that white girl. That Who else are you being nice to? Devon and Akeem work so well together. It's like they both like are real snappy at the mouth. So watching them go ahead and read everybody is really funny to watch them go at, it, at, um, at the park. Devon is always funny. That is like pop off King right there. So... I, I enjoy watching his because his read they make sense they be they hit harder, Akeem not so much but together they kind of like they work well the dynamic between the two works for me so I enjoy watching it can't wait to see what Devon got going on this um this season it's gonna be a lot I'm excited to see him as well so we will definitely see what's gonna go on with that let's take a look at the next one. <laughs> Hey bitch, it's your pretty boyfriend. My name is Redrick, I grew up in Arkansas and I am a hairstylist and makeup artist here in Atlanta, Georgia. And it hasn't always been easy growing up in Arkansas. It's a small town, small country town. Yes, I am a country bumpkin, but I got skill. Me being a young gay male trying to find himself, throughout high school, I always knew that I wanted to be a part of the beauty industry. So growing up, I always had that mindset. Soon as I graduated, I hit it. On the plane, I'm out. Went to Dallas, started a modeling career, and that's where I got into all the beauty and the makeup and the fierce and the oohs and the ahs. So now, 
I am currently a hairstylist and a makeup artist. I started doing hair first right after I finished with the whole modeling thing. Moved to Houston. From Houston, I got more and more into makeup. I've seen a lot of people in Atlanta that I looked up to that was really doing good things and that was really successful in working for themselves. So, of course, I wanted to come here and hit the big city and see what I could bring to the table. And I came. They loved me. And I mean, bitch, what else could I say? <laughs> Being a pretty boy doesn't mean that you want to be a woman. You know, it just means that you want to be pretty. Everybody isn't capable of being a woman, and I'm one of them. But what I am capable of is serving you on a silver platter. You know what I mean? Now and let's get know, back to the corner. I am a big Trina fan. So, Redrick's fucking entrance was bomb. I was here for it. Um, watching um, Redrick's confessional, just where he's coming from, like from the South, you know, the moves, how he got started in fashion, makeup. I'm actually interested to see his story. Like him and um uh, and Redrick and Ike are two cast members. I'm really interested to see their stories because they got a lot of backstory that a lot of people don't know. Ike was on Jeopardy. Um, he has a sock line. Um, he sings beautifully. Redrick with the makeup, the modeling. She's been to Texas. I'm sorry, he's been to Texas. It's just a lot. It just he's just like an overall interesting person. I've met Redrick a couple times, and Redrick is actually a cool person. So I'm really interested to see his story as well. Um, I felt like his scene was a little bit too just it wasn't a lot wasn't put into his scene. That's just how I felt. I think I could have got a little bit more from Redrick than get drowned out with Charlie. So I would like to see more. Hopefully in the next coming episode I'll see more of Redrick and what Redrick has going on. So we not just shoved down with one. Particular Bitch, you know granddaddy D. You know great granddaddy D. Bitch, I just can't take cause what is she actually doing for you? Mama D is like Bitch, to me, this ain't no ordinary motherfucking celebrity in the first fucking place, bitch. She just happened to be a fucking spring rose of a celebrity. Just like myself, bitch, I'm rising. I'm trying to be a motherfucking swan. Don't get me wrong, I'm doing my shit, but bitch, guess what? Girl, I don't have any damn millions. Mama D don't either. Girl, what are you doing? Who are you doing? Or is she doing you? Uh... <laughs> For, I don't know, for like six well, months. I don't know, for six months? For like six months. So you been mom people for six months. What you got going on? Like, how y'all put anything in the words? Do you got any EPs, any demos? Yeah, what you got going yeah. on? I'm sitting here and I'm noticing so I'm saying to my own damn self, as Zion is talking like, bitch, why are you giving me a little version of young job, bitch? You know what I mean? Only thing you miss it's a fucking perm. It's a no no boo. You're not gonna make it to Hollywood with those shades on. So are you a singer or you're a rapper? I mean, what the fuck are you trying to do for real? Cause I don't know you as all that long. Last thing I heard you was a church boy. Choir guy. I've always been a church boy and I'll always be a church boy. Mm, you trying to be Mace? Why that? I mean, we met. God? No, uh, no. We, have any we met, issues. you were cool. You wanted to go a little further and I wasn't ready for that. Not, no, 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 not for this for the relationship. We had a little fun, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't, not remind me, um. Well, I just see it like this right here. I will never forget a face and I will never forget a name if I know you This know goes me. back to what I just said. This man is coming here talking about some, this guy's a rapper. You're supposed to be meeting with him because you want to work on music and you don't have any music. But yes, you're in this man's thing bashing about Mama D and he's with signed with Mama D and all this other stuff. You cannot bash this man and you have nothing besides this show. That's all you have. Like, you really have, this is it for you. So I don't understand how you would go there and bash a, you know, an artist that makes actual music in this, I guess his studio session. Just does not make sense to me. And then furthermore, you're supposed to be there talking about music. You done went into how the, the sex y'all two didn't had, and when y'all last had sex, the man said he don't remember having sex with you. Why are we making this an issue? I have no freaking clue. If I was that man, I probably would have jumped up. That's Zion. Shouts out to Zion. I don't know how he sat there and dealt with that for as long as I would, because I probably reached him and popped her ass. Because she's just being mad, disrespectful, and then she's not talking about nothing she claimed she wanted to come in there and talk about. So, I'm confused. Don't talk about nobody else's music and you don't have any. That's just rule of thumb. And speaking of music, let's take a look at what Akeem decide music has. Rain drop the rain drips all over my crab. Ride this show with my ass rattling. He like to call me poppy when I get this nasty. Sweat drop, drip, drip, talk that trash. Roll over in the shoulder, try not to crash. Oh, that daddy, daddy, yes, you really know how. Oh, baby, be baby, just don't slow us down. Took 25 minutes to get all cleaned up. And we ain't even gonna make it to this club. Oh,
beat that bitch with a bad hello if that's what you call music and that's what you've been working on and that's the only thing i know from a claim of fame is somebody had a fine act i had literally had to ask for that like does he have anything send it to me and that's what was sent to me and i'm just like okay so like let's again let's work on Akeem. I hopefully this season we see more of anything that Akeem does besides talk shit and confessionals. That's all I want to see from him. Um, Zion, I don't know if he's like a B cast. He's on the cast. I don't really know, but like since the cast of eighty, we don't know. We'll find out soon enough. So let's continue to watch. Overall, I enjoyed everything. I just hope all the episodes that's to come are not as long winded as this one was. Um, yeah, it's good quality. Um, they have a nice following, so I'm very interested to see what's going to go on with this new season. And it's a lot of reading going on. Hopefully, that I don't know what's the status with a lot of these um, cast members now, today. But I'm hopefully, they then pulled each other aside and say, look, I'm talking shit about you. I need to know what's going on. So, y'all stay tuned here. We'll do more updates on the corporate mouth. We have some other things um, going on with the G status coming up, too. Be on the lookout for that. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you thought about the first episode and, you know, things that you liked and didn't like. I want to hear all of it because I'm going to go through and read all of it. So um, put the comments down below. Let us know how you feel. Let us know who's your favorite so far based off the first episode because I really want to know if you felt the same way that I felt about some of the scenes that I saw or if there was another scene that you wanted me to particularly, you know, particularly talk about. Let's bring that up. So let's do that. Once again, I'm Carla Bonzel and this is The Corporate Mouth.